Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We begin our service with our opening song on page three, Hine Mato. Hine Mato. Umanahayim shevet achim kaham yachad. 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 How good it is. How good it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is to be together on this day. How good it is. How good it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is to be together on this day. He named my tov, Umanahim Shevet Achim Kaham Yachad. He named my tov, Umanahim Shevet Achim Kaham Yachad. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It really is so special to be together. And I was talking to Mike before the service, and I said, do you think anybody's going to come and break away from the opening ceremonies of the uh, Olympics? And yes, we do. We have uh, a nice, full, beautiful uh, group to pray with and to be with, to celebrate Shabbat with. And uh, we can say a little prayer. May the Americans do well during the Summer Olympics, right? Uh, but uh, so it's, it's, it's really very, very special to all be together. Um, I was looking out and I think, wow, we've got a lot of our young uh, teens here today. I'm just going to invite uh, MJ up and uh, uh, Lewis up and uh, Jonathan, why don't you come up? Josh, come up too. Uh, just help me light these candles uh, and, and, and say kiddish with me because it's just rare that I get such a good group of youth um, but before we light our Shabbat candles and welcome Shabbat with the readings on page 7, uh, we pause each week and pray that uh, we will not have to pause much longer. But uh, we, since October 7th, we've been praying for the safe return of those hostages that are still alive and the return of all of them. We pray that uh, our our brethren in Israel are safe as we spend a moment before Shabbat in a moment of silence. And we invite that sense of peace and calm as we light our Shabbat candles and turn in our prayer books to page 7. And uh, I'll let each of you read one of these lines here. Come, let us welcome the Sabbath. May its radiance illuminate our hearts as we kindle these tapers. Light is a symbol, symbol of, of the, the divine, divine, the eternal, eternal God. God. is our light and our salvation. Light is the symbol of the holiness within each of us. The human spirit is the light of God. Light is the symbol of the divine law. For the commandment is a lamp, and the Torah is a light. Light is the symbol of Israel's mission. As it is written, I have set for you a covenant of the people for a light unto the nations. Therefore, in the spirit of our ancient tradition, that hallows and unites Israel and all and lands and all nations, do we, do we now, now kindle the Sabbath lights. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Aolam Asher Kishanu 
Praise you, eternal God, ruler of the universe, who hallows us through laws and ethical teachings and commands us to kindle the Sabbath lights. May God bless, bless us with Sabbath, Sabbath joy. May, May God bless, bless us with Sabbath holiness. May God bless us with Sabbath peace. Amen. 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 While I have you guys up here, I want you to stay up for the Kiddush as well. And the words right on this side. So in our prayer book on page 308, before we the words of the Kiddush together. We uh, look back on a week of celebrations. We celebrated the birthdays of Stephanie Barbie, Logan Belcher, Richard Felko, Levi Folliter, Asher Foreman, Liam Gollins, Elliot Gross, Dory Hillman, Philip uh, Hurwitz, Scott Cohn, Hayden Lasher, Laura Lempert, Marvin Lerner, Darlene Medford. Happy birthday, Darlene. Uh, Eileen Muslin, uh, Lisa Reed, Deborah Sondock, Leslie Suez, Mark Weisberg, Mark, happy birthday, uh, Aaron Will, and the anniversaries of Terry and Scott Bernstein, Sandy and Ken Cantor, Debbie and David Wizig. We do not take these moments for granted. We toast L'chaim to life and lift our cup in thanksgiving as we turn in our prayer books to page 308 for the Kiddush. We praise you, eternal our God, ruling spirit of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Baruch Eloheinu melech haolam Hagopen <laughs> Zikaron le maase breshit ki hu yom tehila le mikrae kodesh zehelet siat mitzrayim ki vanu b'charta beltanu. Kidashta Nikol Hamim Bishabat Kochecha Beahava Uvratson In Altanu Barukhata Adonai Mikadesh HaShabbat Amen And I think uh, Josh may be the closest to drinking, so you can enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Remember to sign in, too. Sign in. Yeah, in the back. Sign in so you get credit. All right. Shabbat shalom. It's so good to see you. Our service continues now on page 31. Please rise for our call to worship. Baruchu et Adonai Hamvorach. Praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Va'ed. Let us praise the eternal God, to whom all praise is due, now and forever. Amen. 
34, oops, 30, sorry, 2. <laughs> oh God, how can we know you? Where can we find you? You are as close to us as breathing, and yet are farther than the most distant star. You are as mysterious as the vast solitudes of the night, and yet are as familiar to us as the light of the sun. Even to Moses you said, you cannot see my face, but I will make all my goodness pass before you. Thus does your goodness pass before us in the realm of nature and in the varied experiences of our lives. When justice burns like a flame within us, when love evokes willing sacrifice from us, when to the last full measure of selfless devotion we proclaim our belief in the ultimate triumph of truth and righteousness, we are truly doing your will. You live in our hearts even as you pervade our world. Your righteous action we offer living testimony to your presence. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Eternal is our God, the Eternal God is one. Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Leolam Va'ed. Let us praise God who rules in glory forever and ever. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Leolam Va. Please be seated as we continue together. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. Bechol avavcha, uvchol navshecha, uvchol meodecha. Ve'hayu hadvarim ha'ele. Asher anochi misavcha hayom al levavecha. Vishinan tam levanecha, vidibarta bam. Vishibtecha bebeitecha, uvlechtecha vaderech. Uvshoch becha uv kumecha, Ukshartam leot al yadecha, Vihayu le totafot bain enecha, Tam al mezuzot betecha, Uvisharecha, Lemaan tiskeru vasitem et kol mitzvotai, Vitem kedoshim leloechem, Ani Adonai elohechem. You shall love the eternal God with all your heart, with all your soul with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. They shall be a symbol before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. The eternal truth is that you alone are God and there is none else. May the righteous of all nations rejoice in your love and exult in your justice. Let them beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Let nation not lift up sword against nation nor learn war anymore. 
You shall not hate your brother or your sister in your heart. Why do you crush my people and oppress the poor? Ask God. We know that the eternal one defends the poor and upholds the rights of the needy. Who is like you, eternal one? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awe inspiring, working wonders? Page 36, cause us, eternal God, to lie down in peace and to awaken each morning to renewed life and strength. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Help us order our lives by your counsel and lead us in paths of righteousness. Be a shield about us, protecting us from hatred and war, from pestilence and sorrow. Shameru Bnei Yisrael Et HaShabbat La'asot Et HaShabbat L'doro Tamberi Olam Shameru Bnei Yisrael Et HaShabbat Laso et hashabat ledoro tamberi olam. Eniu vein bene Israel, eniu vein bene Israel. O tile olam, o tile olam. Shameru b'nei Yisrael et hashabat la'asod et hashabat l'doro tamberi olam.
together. The people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout the generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the people of Israel forever. Please rise as we join together and ask God to open our lips that our mouths may declare God's praise. Adonai, sifatai tifta, ufia gite hilatecha. Eternal God, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe Avotenu, Vimotenu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Sarah, Vekol Dorotam, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor Vehanora, El Elion, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezoher Haste Avot Vimahot, Umevi Geula Livnevnehem, Leman Shemo Beahava, Melech Ozeru Moshia Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham, Vezrat Sarah. We praise you, God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah and all their generations. You bestow loving kindness upon all your children. You remember the devotion of those who came before us. In your love, you bring redemption to their descendants for the sake of your name. You are our ruler, our helper, our savior and protector. We praise you, eternal one, shield of Abraham, help of Sarah. Eternal is your power, O God. You are mighty to save. In the multitude of your mercies, you preserve us all. You uphold the falling, heal the sick, free the captives, and keep faith with your children in death as in life. Who is like you, almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation? We praise you, for you have implanted in us eternal life. Please be seated as we join together in the top of page 39 with our prayer for peace. May all people find their way to help establish peace on earth. Let them cultivate that goodwill which may bring during peace. Let nations realize that the triumphs of war turn to ashes, that justice and right are better than conquest and dominion. May they come to see that it is not by might and not by power, but by your spirit that life prevails. Bless our land with plenty and our nation with peace. May righteousness abide among us and virtue bring us home. Blessed is the eternal one to prayer. Shalom Rahab al Yisraelam Chaha Tasihim Leolam Shalom Rahab al Yisraelam Kaha Tasihim Leolam Ki atahu melech adom Lechol ha-shalom Shalom Rahav al Yisraelam Chaha Tasihim Leolam Litov be'enecha Livarech Et amecha Yisrael Bechol eit Bechol sha'a Bishlomecha Shalom Rahab al 
Yisrael am ha ha tasim leolam. Shalom rahab al Yisrael am ha ha tasim leolam. Tasim leolam. Tasim leolam. We spend a few moments now in silent meditation. The soul that has been implanted within each of us is pure. And our bodies are created in God's image. But there are times when heart and soul do not feel so whole. At times of loss, at times of illness, at times when we struggle with mental health or addiction, we can often feel a sense of distance from God and our community. And so each week we turn in our prayer books to page 384 to sing a beautiful prayer of healing. 
before we sing the Misha Berach prayer together, I'd like to invite anyone who knows someone who is in need of healing to raise your hand so we can include your friends or family in our prayers tonight. We also include in our prayers tonight prayers for, uh, for uh, Jill Morgenstern as we ask God to bless our friends and family with healing of body, mind, and spirit. a blessing and let us say Amen Mi Sheberach Ihimoteinu Kor Habracha Bless those in need, healing with refuah lehema, the renewal body, the renewal of the spirit, and let us say, Ah. It was almost two weeks ago that a gunman tried to assassinate former President Donald Trump. And in the aftermath of this horrific act of violence, our nation finds itself at a terrifying precipice. We are at a place in history like we have never seen before, where political violence has become a serious national concern. The attempt on the life of our former president is just one of many attempts on lives over the course of the past few years. In 2011, a gunman tried to assassinate former U.S. Representative Gabby Giffords in Arizona. In 2017, House Majority Leader Stephen Scalise from Louisiana was shot during a friendly game of baseball with other Republican members of Congress. On October 2020, federal and state authorities revealed an elaborate scheme to kidnap the Democratic governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. On October of 2022, Paul Pelosi, husband of former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, was attacked with a hammer at his home in San Francisco. And on January 6, 2021, a massive insurrection was waged against the capital of the United States. Each of these acts represents or presents us as Americans with some very important existential questions. Who are we? What has happened to our nation? And why has our political system become riddled by so much violence in recent years. All of these questions and so many more pulse through our society today. 
And while we may not be able to fully understand how and why the political climate has become so violent, I do believe that this week's Torah portion can shed some light on what needs to change. At the end of last week's Torah portion and in the beginning of this week's Torah portion, the Torah recounts some of the most disturbing stories in our entire biblical canon. At the beginning of Numbers chapter 25, we read a vivid account of how the Israelites profane themselves by whoring with Moabite women and by offering themselves to their false gods. Then, in response to this moral depravity, Moses shows no mercy. He instructs Israelite officials to slay all of the men who had engaged in these transgressions. The officials of Moses uh, do as Moses commands. They massacre the guilty Israelites on the spot. This massacre becomes the backdrop for the story of Pinchas, which we read this week. Pinchas has just witnessed the sins of the Israelites and the consequences of their actions as Moses instructs the massacre of the transgressors. When suddenly Pinchas sees an Israelite man and a Midianite woman having sex in public on the steps of the tent of meeting. Seeing this, Pinchas immediately takes matters into his own hands, and in an act of zealous fury, Pinchas stabs and kills the Israelite man and the Midianite woman with a single thrust of one sword, impaling both of them together in their act of sinning. While this zealousness of Pinchas is absolutely abhorrent, it has been argued that the blame for this monumental act of sheer violence should not be placed on Pinchas alone. After all, Pinchas has just witnessed the complete massacre of other Israelites for similar behaviors. And this massacre was ordered by none else than Moses himself. While the dominant message of these two stories seems to indicate that the sins of idolatry and sexual misconduct are not to be tolerated, generations of scholars have struggled with the severe consequences for their transgressions. Furthermore, these stories help us to see that when violence is conducted from leaders at the top, it is likely that violence will be practiced by those who follow. These dark stories, riddled with violence and extremist behaviors, speak to us today. And I believe they provide us with important insights regarding the violent political climate of our society. Today, we are surrounded by intolerance and violence from many of the upper echelons of our country. The violence comes from the left. The violence comes from the right. It is advertised by our media, and it festers like a cancer in every corner of society. We see it in the poison, the, we see this poisonous intolerance on college campuses across the country, whose pro-Palestinian encampments generate terrible anti-Semitism as they use violence to draw attention to their causes and refuse to consider a full understanding of the conflict itself. We witness it in, in such tribal, uh, political tribalism during the marches which unnecessarily pitted black lives and blue lives against each other, even though most of us embrace the truth that all lives matter. And we have witnessed it through the horrible political violence that was waged against our ele electoral officials most recently the assassination attempt against our former president. These incidents only scratch the surface of the violent nature of modern society. In today's political culture, extremist ideologies have an oversized impact on shaping our policies and our debates. They dominate our news feeds 
and they determine the algorithms that manipulate us on social media. We need not look beyond the headlines for any news source to see a pervasive intolerance of op opposing views, a populist acceptance for public shaming and ostracism, and a tendency to dissolve complex policy into oversimplified tweets and memes that claim a hold on an uncompromising monopoly for moral certainty. Shame on us for generating, perpetuating, and consuming such overly simplified content. And yet, we, like Pinchas, are not solely to blame for our eagerness to accept the moral high grounds of our choosing. The content that we are consuming and the intolerance that we demonstrate toward each other is coming from sources beyond us. It's coming from sources far above us, far more powerful than us. And we literally are at the mercy of it. We literally cannot escape being manipulated by algorithms that feed us one-sided, one-dimensional information about everything in life. Our media sources trap us into very narrow views of the world and cause us to understand each other in ways that are often demeaning and dismissive. Leaders and power brokers around the world in the spirit of preserving a specific brand of politics that keeps them in power, have pushed us, the general public, to a point where far too many of us have become adverse to compromise and virtually blind to the possibility of alternative ideas. It can certainly be argued that there are things that are unfolding all over the world around us that are absolutely wrong. There are policies which are severely misguided. There are behaviors and practices that are unquestionably unethical. And in response to such immorality, we, like Moses in the Torah, must consider decisive and immediate directives. But, unlike Moses, those responses need not be violent. As Jews, we are inheritors of a tradition that tends toward moderation in thought as well as in deed. Throughout our history as a people, we have embraced the idea that Torah serves as our primary guide to make us better, to make us more thoughtful, to make us more moral human beings. Embracing the godliness in everyone, we have come to understand ways to respect each other and to respect life despite our differences. And walking in the footsteps of our heritage, we have found ways to navigate conflict without violence. In the face of the rising culture of violence in our country today, our challenge as Jews demands freeing ourselves from the manipulation of powers beyond us that seek to divide us and opening ourselves to views of those who others that may be different from our own and eventually, possibly, unclenching our fists to embrace more harmony and peace in our interactions. In the weeks, in the months, and the days about a hundred or so left before the elections, it is our responsibility to listen a little more to each other, to be a lot less aggressive with each other, and to open our hearts to possibilities and ideas that may not completely match with our own. If we do, at least in the circles that we engage, we can lower that level of violence around us. Ken Hiratzon, 
may it be so. Our service continues now as we turn in our prayer books to page uh, 294 and rise as a congregation for Alenu. Alenu le Shabbat la don ha kol la teit kedula liot sev reishit shelo asanu kegoye haratzot velo samanu kemish pechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegoraleinu. Kechol hamonam, va anachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. Let us adore the ever living God. We render praise unto you who spread out the heavens and established the earth. Your glory is revealed in the heavens above, and your greatness is manifest throughout the world. You are our God. There is none else. We bow our heads in reverence before the Eternal One, source of all life. Please be seated as we continue together in the middle of page 294. May the time not be distant, O God, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently we pray that the day may come when all people shall invoke your name, when corruption and evil give way to purity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. When all who dwell on earth shall know that to you alone every knee shall bend and every tongue give praise. May all created in your image recognize that we are brothers and sisters so that one in spirit and one in harmony we may forever be united before you. Then shall your reign be established on earth and the word of your ancient prophet be fulfilled. The eternal God will reign forever and ever. Venemar ve hayar ol nai le melech al kol ha aretz. Bayom ahu, bayom ahu, yihyeh adonai echad. Bayom ahu. Bayom ahu yihyeh Adonai echad. Ushemo echad, ushemo echad, ushemo Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people, the six million who perished in the Shoah, and those of every race, nation, and faith whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. The departed whom we now remember have entered into the peace of life eternal. They still live on earth in the acts of goodness they performed and in the hearts of those who cherish their memory. May the beauty of their lives abide among us as a loving benediction. We remember with love Elvin Ainsworth, Olga Breyer, Michael Jav Javadov, Jim Freeman, Herbert Golden, Jeanette Lebo, Roger Mills, Celia Shapiro, Dr. Frank Yellen, it is my sad responsibility to share with you this evening the passing of Dr. Michael Frumovitz. Before we rise as a congregation to recite the hallowed words of the Mourner's Kaddish, 
I'd like to extend an invitation to anyone here who may be observing a yard site or is in a period of mourning to rise first if they wish to speak the name of their loved one aloud and remain standing through the Kaddish. Let us rise with those who mourn as we turn in our prayer books to page 302 for the Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yidash shemei rabah be'alma divrach irute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon v'chayedechol be'i Yisrael ba'agala uv'izman kariv v'imeru. Amen. Yehe shmei rabah mevorach mevorach maya Yit barach, vish tabach, vit par, vit romam, vit nase, vit adar, vit ale, vit alal, shmeid kudsha, brichu, le ela min kol bir chata, vishirata, tush vichata, vinechamata, damiran be alma, vimru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, vichayim alenu ve al kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. Ose shalom bim romav. Hu yase shalom, aleinu v'alkol Yisrael v'imru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort all who are bereaved. And let us say, amen. Please be seated as we have a few announcements before our closing song and final benediction. Uh, Amy Hill is our board rep this evening, so if you have any questions about the congregation, I see some new faces out there. Uh, Amy is a person who will be a wonderful source of that information, and in that I see a bunch of new faces out there, please, when you're in line for a cookie at the Oneg and you see someone you don't recognize, extend a warm Shabbat Shalom to them and make sure that you get to, to know them so we can make sure everyone feels welcome and uh, part of our community. On Tuesday, July 30th, which is next Tuesday at 11 o'clock, we have a trip to the Holocaust Museum of Houston with a lunch, and uh, it's a final call. So if you are interested in, uh, in, in uh, participating in this early next week, please call. Uh, is there a space still, Beth? Okay, so you can even tell Beth tonight, but it's uh, $15 a person, which is a great uh, deal for lunch and, and a tour of the Holocaust Museum if you haven't uh, been to it since it's been uh, uh, renovated. Uh, on Friday, the 2nd of August, is that next week Friday? I think it is. All right, so we all, as we have on all of our first Fridays of the month, we have our Shabbat B'yachad, which was preceded by dinner. So it's dinner at 6.15, Shabbat services at 7.15. Next week's dinner is a delicious dinner of salads and salmon and chicken nuggets and mac and cheese and, of course, home-baked challah. And uh, we're looking forward to anyone who, uh, who comes. But make sure that, you, or you don't have to, but it's really, really helpful if you let us know ahead of time that you're coming so we can cook accordingly. And on Sunday, August 4th, which is next Sunday from 9 to 12, we are having a social action project at the Houston Food Bank. Uh, we will be sorting and packing food. It's a great opportunity to bond over so social justice work. Um, if you have questions about other activities going on. We've got wonderful flyers in the foyer. And our closing song tonight is a song of praise to God, page 373, as we sing together, Ain Kelohenu, and fill this sanctuary with song. Ain Kelohenu, Ain Kadoneinu, Ain Kimokainu, Ain Kimoshienu, 
Mikel Oheinu, Mikadoneinu, Mikemalkeinu, Mikemoshienu, Motel Eloheinu, Motel Adoneinu, Motel Emalkeinu, Motel Emoshienu. Eloheinu, Baruch Adoneinu, Baruch Balkeinu, Baruch Moshiein. Atahu Elohei, Atahu Adonai, Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshieinu. Adonai Ozleim Oitein. Adonai Yivarech et Amova Shalom. May God grant strength to our people. May God bless us and people everywhere with the blessing of Shalom, the blessing of peace. Amen. Before we enjoy a wonderful Onik together, we thank God for the bread we share. Oh, lots of challah covers, just one challah. All right. Join together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Praise are you, eternal, our God-willing Spirit of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Shabbat shalom.